Hello everybody, welcome back to Thomas Plays Games. I'm playing Factorio. This is episode 3 of the new patch, 0.15. Yeah, I'm just getting, finally got uh, optics, so now I'll be able to place down lights, make it look a lot, lot nicer for everybody who's watching. Uh, yeah, just picking up stuff. The uh, automating belt production at the very start I think is a good idea. It lets you stop, it lets you use your production space for other things. And because I have expensive uh, cost on, it really does help. So yeah, I'm just trying to get lights for all of these different things. Got the, uh, I got the the bus kind of going in the right way I wanted to. Uh, it's still through a force and it's going to be a bit tough. And uh, I know because I've already played this and you can see on the far right there, there's a, actually a huge patch of iron right where the bus would go into. And uh, I like to uh, kind of space out my bus. So it means I will have to start mining that uh, pretty soon. I think I do that next episode probably but yeah the whole goal here get the bus going for uh, I, I like to do four distance away that's what I'm doing there the whole the goal is here get the bus with iron copper and uh, circuits three of the most important things to get and then once you have all of those things going uh, so that means you gotta actually do automation of circuits down here once you have all those things going then you can work on doing science Specifically red science right now since I'm still in that area where it's only I can only really do red science easily So yeah, go for red science and then other sciences beyond that And this is the uh, you know the the curse of the forest always have to chop down trees whenever I want to do anything Connect all that up so that I will have power when I start building more things down near the bus and luckily I do because I space these things far away, I do have lots and lots of available area to uh, to work in. Yeah, quite a lot of copper there. But I will need it until I get uh, circuits, until I get circuits more automated. I'm gonna try to place lights every two power poles, just to, you know, keep the aesthetic looking good. I place these things, I like to do a, a four, four belt channel so I can actually fully divert some of the uh, some of the belt chains. So I put one of them directly off into circuits for each copper and iron. And uh, yeah, we're still on assembly machine one. It's going to work on those afterwards, but I think getting circuits... Uh, getting circuits and more science up is really the major goal right now. Especially with the really high science costs that I'm uh, dealing with in this game. But yeah, just chopping down wood. Yeah, I don't think I've done it yet, but soon I'll be automating uh, some of the stone smelting so I can get stone bricks and use those bricks to uh, actually make nice paths. Yeah, just checking on the copper. Copper's doing okay. Only about 7 of the 20 actual furnaces being used, but it's, uh, it's better than nothing. So yeah, right here I'm going to look at, try to, just try to get the, get it so I can get some copper bricks. I've got a huge patch here, but I don't need most of it yet. So yeah, I was going to place this down, feed in some... Uh, well, I was going to feed in some stone from that uh, chest, but it ended up that I didn't really need to since I put the mining drill I had down. It feeds directly into the smelter, and I'll just come back and pick them up, or pick the uh, stone bricks up whenever I want them. Cool. Excellent. And yeah, it just turns out I have a whole lot more stone bricks than I thought I or uh, stone than I thought I would. And there we go, first little bit of our path, just through like eight blocks down. Yeah, running along the belts is always helpful. Seem to have filled that up nicely. And uh, yeah, I end up putting right around where I'm standing is the first circuit area, that's where I'm thinking I'll put it. So I want to put it like that so I can get a lot of good stuff here. I spaced, uh, I spaced these belts out quite a lot because I'm more worried about late game when I'm going to need multiple belts of multiple blue belts of copper uh, going down to the main bus to actually properly fill in all the requirements. So I give myself lots and lots of space so I can have multi-lane uh, belts going towards the bus. And as always, just chopping the trees down. Yeah, 
I am super excited to get robots in this game. I can just eliminate an entire forest in one go. Yep, so just place that one down there. Place a uh, some underground belt to go under the iron thing. And there we go, we're good. Just looking around, trying to figure out what I want to do. Yeah, so the setup that I'm going to use, because I'm using the more expensive things, I need 10 copper wires for every single circuit. Which means I'm going to need, I can't just do the regular 2 to 1, or 3 to 2 ratio. I have to do the uh, 4 to, f yeah. I have to do f all four of these, and maybe even one more would be required to get an optimal thing. Uh, but this is good enough. I haven't really noticed any huge slowdowns because of lack of, uh, uh, yeah, lack of circuits when I get this going. So yeah, generally, iron goes up the middle so they can get inserted into the circuits, and the copper goes up and around the uh, these things. So it's like my mouse here goes up and around like this. You'll see it later on. Uh, yeah, so then I uh, just gotta get the copper going. And uh, place my uh, power poles. Hopefully they look proper. And yeah, just split up the iron. Make sure that I can get uh, at least two of these things. And I'm trying to figure out how do I want the circus to get back. And I decide I'll just put them this way and go underneath. Uh, underneath the, two co the copper and the iron belt so that I can... Actually, make sure I have a whole bunch of free stuff, or a whole bunch of uh, space that I, if I need it. Because again, I've got very, very, I've got a very big starting area, which means I have lots and lots of space to work with. I don't have to worry about butters yet. I will once I get start, once I start getting to a bigger factory. But normally, normally I'm able to get to laser turrets before I have to worry. So hopefully, I can do that. There we go. I got a not too bad chunk of. Uh, stone bricks. So we're gonna start filling in this area between the smelting area and the bus so that I can walk much faster. And I'm like, how do I want to place these things? I don't want it to go... yeah. I want to make sure the copper can go to those inserters so that I can get the copper wires. And yeah, there we go. Again, I want four... I want a four space away, so I just place four belts to space those things out. And I don't think I need uh, as much throughput I don't think I'll need as much throughput for these things as I will copper and iron. So I just put uh, two belts down for the circuits. And yeah, I just want these things up and around there so that all the uh, copper wire can be produced. And yeah, that should be pretty good. Very low copper production, or low amounts of uh, copper plates coming down. So that's more the, uh, the issue there that I have. And yeah, this is the general setup I end up using. I think it's pretty good, honestly. Um, doesn't really change that much. Just requires more space. I have no idea how I'm going to do a beacon design. So yeah, maybe I'll have, to, I'll have to figure that out. But beacons are a very advanced technology. So it'll be uh, tough to do. And yeah, so the throughput in this base is pretty darn low. So I decide I'm going to get some more... Uh, mining drills, go fill out some of the areas that I need. Pretty sure it's going to be copper soon, since uh, that seems to be the major uh, the major problem I'm having. It's very low copper amounts. Yep, just running all the way over. So I think it's the only thing, other than the fact that it's hard to chop the forest down quickly, the only other bad thing about this is that there's not, there's no copper nearby. So I will have to rush for trains, I think. I think I want, I think I'm going to want trains, lots of trains and lots of laser turrets uh, to defend myself. Yeah, just cutting these things down, trying to clear out more of this. And I haven't actually explored much area around the base, so it might be that there's lots and lots of copper just outside my map, uh, but the, uh, a radar I put down at some point in this game, I think it was after, it was in episode 4, I think. One of the radars that I put down, uh, it's been, like, scanning the area around here, and I haven't seen any extra copper. So maybe we'll have, like, an oil issue in the last series that we did, uh, uh, where I'll have to explore really deep into Biter territory to get more copper. 
And yeah, just trying to make this thing look nice so that I can run through this area. Unfortunately, the uh, where I put the the main bus is just off from where I put the actual path. So I'm trying to make that look nice. There we go. It's not bad. Now you can just run down here. Very slight change, but it still looks quite good. And uh, yeah, I think I like the I like the slower pace because it looks much nicer. You can spend more time on aesthetics when you don't have like five researches finishing one after another and you just have to rush to get them done. There we go, place those down. Make sure I can uh, just, it all looks nice. And uh, yeah, I'm going to grab more stone bricks, try to place these things. Get a, a, a quick path going uh, from, or get a, get a nice path to speed me up where in any nice locations that I want to end up at. Yep, resources look pretty good over there. Yeah, the steel processing is quite slow because of the uh, lack of yeah, lack of labs I have. So now that I've got everything set up, I've got circuits coming in, I have pretty substantial amount of iron and the copper is going to be increasing. I figure now is probably the time that I want to try to make as many uh, labs as possible. And space those poles out so that I can get a uh, path going straight up. But yeah, get these things going. It looks it looks pretty good, and um, and uh, yeah, the uh, the circuit production is a little low right now. So before I start filling with all the labs, I'm just going to increase that as well. Got to space out more so I can... It's not too hard to mirror this thing. The throughput gets a little tough later on at higher levels of assembly machines. Oh, broke my first two pickaxes. But yeah, so I'm going to need five more assembly machines and a whole bunch of labs to get the next expansion I'm thinking of. Yeah, so I want to double up the circuits and I want to get labs. It's important to uh, think about how you're going to place the labs now because it's really easy to... Uh, before you could just have belts on one side or in the center of a stack, but now because there's six types of sciences, you have to be more careful uh, to make sure that you actually have space to insert into all or all of the science packs into your labs in the future. So I do try to leave myself a whole bunch of space when I eventually design it and make it much more scalable since science is uh, science is a more uh, important upgrade now since it can go infinite later on in later stages of the game there are some sciences that can go pretty much forever uh, which are really good ones to get because you do want to be able to uh, get those upgrades they they cost exponentially more every time you get you get one but it does help quite a bit in uh, or it should help quite a bit in making the late game even faster. Um, but yeah, basically what I'm saying is that like you do need to have a a permanent science setup as opposed to like a pretty good one that will last you like 20 hours in a game. Whereas like nowadays you really do want one that'll last forever, so that you can use you can use the rockets to get your your space science packs, uh, so that you can continue to get your more upgraded uh, science things. Just gotta chop down more trees. Give myself a whole bunch of space, as much as possible. There we go. Doubling up the circuit area. Excellent. Looks quite nice and symmetric. And yeah, for later on when you get to blue science, I would recommend upgrading all of the uh, if you're going to use this kind of design, you need to upgrade all of the inserters to be something uh, more useful. Because the uh, yellow ones are not fast enough to uh, keep up with with throughput you need later on. Yeah, picking up more circuits so I can build more things. Yeah, so that doubled my circuit input. Or output. Yeah. And it looks like I still make enough copper that I won't have, an, I won't have a problem. Uh, with that, just trying to make this area look nice. Look nice at night. 
Yeah, I still just have that one lab. I've got the other nine labs in my inventory ready to be used, but I just don't have them, uh, don't have them placed yet. And I don't have the, uh, structure ready for them. There we go. Clearing out some space on the belt for the stone, and that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's not too bad. And cool, so we're put, yeah, grabbing, just grabbing more resources, just kind of looking around, seeing what's going on, getting ready to actually start placing the labs. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out here. You can see that I have that very large iron pack, our iron patch, 1.8 million iron there. That's going to take a while to dig out, so I can't just give myself, like, I can't just take all the space I would want. I'm just looking to see how much I would have to delete there. So I decided to put the science area here. I'm going to try to get the red and green science belt on the left of the science, and the other two belts on the right of the science, so I can get as much of that as possible. It does mean I gotta chop down quite a lot of trees. And uh, yeah, so we're going for 10 science packs right now, and I'll be upgrading to 20 science labs. Uh, not too far away, I think in the next episode, or the fifth one maybe. Yeah, so you just gotta clear out space on either side of the labs. It looks nice, nice and nature-y, like, kinda like greenhouses, but I do need to have space to work. Yeah, so I eventually decide these ones go on this side. Then I'll insert the things. Right now it's just going to be red, and it won't be that hard to upgrade into green. Uh, but make leaving space so that I can do uh, blue science, production science, and advanced science packs. Uh, that's going to be a little tough. There we go, excellent. So I think that's nine science labs down. I still have that one up in the uh, north that's actually doing the steel processing right now and uh, steel processing is going to be a nice science uh, or a nice research to get not because it's a big deal or not because it's really going to help me that much but the only thing that I'm going to get out of it is uh, faster or is the upgraded tool which means I can chop trees faster so hooray less time doing that trying to figure out where I want these things to go. I need to make sure I leave enough space for all the belts in the future so I don't have to tear anything up and to also expand this if I need to uh, just in case. So I was going to put the science on top of it but I was like well probably not the best idea in case I have to add like more gears to deal with more science packs. I don't want to pen myself in like I, uh, I have in other in other games where you like you build your initial setup, it works for like 10 labs, and then you want to upgrade to like 40 when you have way more production, but you can't because uh, you built around it too much. Uh, yeah, so the two things you need for red science, as I'm sure everybody knows, is you need gears and you need copper. So, got the gears ready to be produced, and I got the copper. I wasn't thinking when I first placed this, and the copper is going to go on the wrong side of the belt. Uh, it's going to go on the same side of the belt that the gears would be inserted onto, so I'm going to flip that in a second. And since it's such a high cost for gears, I figure I'll use those. And there you go, I noticed the uh, problem, so I'm just going to fix that. Perfect. That should solve that problem. And yeah, it's a. I'm gonna use the blue inserters, uh, the more advanced ones, uh, because I do need four iron per gear, which is a pretty hefty cost, uh, and it means that it actually takes. You actually wait for like a non-trivial amount of time, uh, in between when the gear gets unloaded and when the next amount of iron gets loaded onto it. Uh, upgrading to stack inserters or other things will fix that problem, but it will take a little while. Yeah, I'm just chopping down some more trees to earn, to get some space. I figure I'll put the red assembly machines there, where they are in a column up there. And on the other side, inserting onto the other side of the belt, I'll be using the... I'll be, I'll be inserting the green science packs. 
And there's actually a pretty decent amount of useful green sciences. Uh, useful green science, uh, tech, green and red science technologies in the game now. Which means you can stay at those for a while, especially with the high research cost. Uh, without having to worry about upgrading to blue science uh, technologies for a little bit. Okay, and now that I have a effective science setup, I'm just going to get rid of this whole area here. I don't need it anymore, and it, this was a, it was a temporary setup, so I'll tear it all up and move it down to the south. There we go, let that build. Awesome, so we got lots of space heading back down to place the last of the tenth, or the last science lab here. And about to get steel processing, so we're very close to getting an upgraded tool. Yeah, just chopping all this, there we go. Cool, we got that science now. Uh, yeah, next I'm going to go for some military. I will eventually have to worry about the biters, but hopefully it won't be for a little while. And if you're just talking about production, uh, so gears take half a second to make, uh, it, pretending that you have no issues loading them onto the assembly machines. Gears take half a second and red science takes uh, five seconds. So in theory, you should be able to uh, effectively or hopefully with maximum efficiency load or have 10 assembly machines for uh, red science and just one assembly machine for gears. That's an ideal ratio. You end up with problems because of throughput and because of uh, idle time for assembly machines, but you know, nine is probably good as long as you have uh, effective loading of iron or yeah, loading of iron onto the gears. And yeah, I end up with way too much uh, wood, so I figure I'll just throw it all in a chest, uh, most of it in a chest, and just let that power the the old power station. It's just running up. I'm going to need... Yeah, I want five. So yeah, now that I have the... What's it called? Now that I have steel researched, I can actually start getting ready to actually use the steel. Uh, or produce the steel. So I'm going to need a whole bunch of... Uh, stone to make more furnaces so that I can do a steel setup. And normally I find that you don't need that much steel uh, for most of the game. Uh, near the very end when you start getting laser turrets and other things that actually require a lot of steel, you might need like two or three uh, total setups, but right now I'm finding that it's not a huge uh, issue. So yeah, one stack of ten Smelters for steel should probably last me most of the game. Here we go. So I'm gonna get. I'm trying to get 20 uh, furnaces because 20 is the. You know, 10 steel furnaces would require 10 iron furnaces first. The ratio. I don't think they changed it. It should be about the same. So I put uh, steel on the right side, and I'm gonna put the iron furnaces on the left side. Um, steel. This is the, the output lane is the close one, the input lane for coal is the far one. Here we go, grabbing turrets. And then I put one thing right here. Yeah, one stack of furnaces there, that's the iron furnace. It's going to have a coal iron combined lane uh, to do proper, yeah, to get proper stuff. So yeah, I need the coal lane like that. And that's going to be the iron lane. I'm just stealing it from the other one to avoid, uh, just to avoid much work, really. You need a whole bunch of inserters, uh, and also red inserters, the long-handed ones. So yeah, these inserters will go straight across. It goes, uh, iron and coal to make iron, and then the iron plates get put into the steel thing to make steel. And copper come or coal comes from the other side. Uh, it's a pretty effective setup. And yeah, just gonna power it all up. Try to get all of their red inserters down. And once I start making a little bit of steel, it'll be, you know, 
basically won't need it for a long, long time, so we'll be good. Yeah, tossing down all the poles. Excellent. Once that connect to those up, there we go. Starting getting our first steel. Okay, and we got the turrets technology. Yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm worried about being a little low on coal, so I'll start fixing that. And actually, we're just about at the end of the episode. So thank you for watching Thomas Plays Games. Hope to see you all next time. Goodbye.